In this module, we'll shift our focus to our customers to identify what they want in their products and services and what they really value. The Kano model is a means of identifying the voice of the customer. In other words, what are my customers' needs? What do they want in a product or service? And what do they expect? And in some cases, what do they want but not know it yet? And this last point is important. Customers have needs that they often are not aware of until they are provided. Have you ever searched for a product online only to end up spending much more money than you originally wanted? on a product with extra features, more gizmos or things that you didn't know existed before you started searching. If you have done this, then this is a sign of a company that has likely used the Kano model to help understand customer requirements. Ultimately, having a clear voice of the customer enables us to make smart decisions about marketing, sales, product planning and other business strategies. It enables quality to be increased and leads to improved customer satisfaction, all things that help enable long-term success. If you think back to the change management module, we learn about companies like Nokia and Kodak who ignored the voice of the customer and failed to see the importance in understanding what customers really wanted. This is what the Kano model looks like. On the x-axis, we have a sliding scale between absent and fulfilled, and on the y-axis, we have a customer satisfaction on a scale from dissatisfied to satisfied. Now that we know the axis, we have three individual lines to plot. The first one is called the basic needs. These are often known as expected needs. They are things that you, as a customer, expect within your product or service. If you follow the shape of the curve, if these needs are absent and they are not met, the customer will be extremely dissatisfied. An example of these basic needs when staying at a hotel is cleanliness. This includes a clean bathroom, clean linen and a pleasant fresh aroma in the air. When a person books a reservation at a hotel, they do not request a clean room, they expect it. If this basic need is not met, then they will be extremely dissatisfied. This is reflected on the graph in the sense that the curve never goes above the x-axis into the satisfaction threshold. It can only detract from customer satisfaction when it is not there or not done well. The next need is called a performance need. These are typically what you compete against your competitors with. Things like price, performance, ease of use, etc. These are typically known as spoken needs in the sense that they are well known to customers and a great way to compare different products or services. Carrying on with the hotel room example, this could be things like having fast internet speeds and a comfortable bed. The more these needs are met, the happier and more satisfied the customer is. The less they are met, the less satisfied the customers are. Unlike the basic needs, the level of fulfilment can determine whether a customer is satisfied or not. Then finally we have the last needs called the excitement needs. These are unspoken and something not expected by the customer. They go above and beyond. With the hotel example this could be freshly baked bread in the morning or a cold glass of champagne waiting for you once you enter your room. These sort of things. If you notice on the graph they cannot lead to dissatisfaction as they are not expected by the customer, but when they are present, they lead to a highly satisfied customer. If we think back to our House of Quality or QFD, a combination of all these needs are required if you want a company to excel and become world class. Basic needs are a must, performance needs are what most companies compete against, and excitement needs are often what makes a business world class. If you think back to the Kaizen module with continuous improvement, it's all about making these small improvements day in day out, which help with the performance needs, continuously striving to provide the customer with greater value. Kaizen workshops, Kaizen events or collaborative problem solving sessions, on the other hand, aim to make step changes and significant breakthroughs. These are more likely focused around the excitement features. The final point I would like to stress with the Kano model 
is that it is a dynamic model where features cascade down in time from excitement needs to performance needs and finally to basic needs. If you think back to Sony introducing the front-facing camera on a mobile phone in 2003, at the time that was a real excitement need and customers thought of it as going above and beyond. Move on to today and it's expected that a mobile phone has a front-facing camera. It has become a basic customer need. Other examples include heated seats being introduced to cars or the more recent feature of having a door projector on many modern cars. These often relatively low cost features and changes can make all the difference when deciding what product to go for and part with your cash. And often, even though they are less important than the performance needs, they stick in people's minds. Many of today's successful products and services have really taken note of these excitement features and the impact that they can have. It is important to note, however, that excitement needs will often become performance needs as competitors follow suit. The Kano model is a great way to help see the product through the eyes of the customer, putting yourself in their position and testing out a product and service. The Kano model can be used to help ensure all basic needs are met for your customer base. Your performance needs are on par or exceed competitors and finally help identify the excitement needs that can be designed into your product or service to really give yourself the competitive advantage. The Kano model uncovers your customer needs and the voice of your customer into three categories, basic, performance and excitement needs. In the next module we'll learn about a practical tool called QFD that translates these needs directly into functions and into features of your product or service. Please join me on the next module.